Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Monday, October 31st, 2016. Um, our colleague, Mr. Kiro, uh, couldn't be here tonight. He has a previous obligation that he needed to attend to. First item on the agenda, request vote of the Board to approve the sale of 25660000 of general obligation bonds. And we have our treasurer of collector and tractors Collector of taxes, Stephen J. Gilligan. I apologize. I know it's really hot in here tonight. Um, we have the windows open, doing the best we can. Mr. Gilligan. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, members of the board. I appreciate your time this evening. Uh, I'm, I hope you've read the memo that was provided to you. Um, I'll try to be as brief as possible and take no more than 37 minutes. Um, we are 32. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'll take that. Uh, and remember, it was, it was at your suggestion, Madam Chairman. Um, I'm very pleased with the results of our recent uh, bond sale. Uh, as it says in the memo, we borrowed $25,660,000. Um, the true interest cost for that borrowing was 2.59%, which is phenomenal even in the existing marketplace with historically low rates. I must uh, state up front that the coupon rate, in other words, the top average bid for the interest on the bonds was 3.8% but the town received a premium to, of $2.1 million, which reduces the true interest cost down to the 2.59%. I should also make sure that I tell the board and, and our voters and taxpayers that we are borrowing less than was authorized. Um, originally, the authorization was slightly more than $27 million. We did not borrow $1 million of that because it's the town's intention to use the proceeds of a sale of an asset to help fund the school construction projects. In addition to that, the premium also offset the borrowed principal amount. And exempt debt <coughs> is now lessened by $468,000 because of that $2.1 million premium. The remainder of that premium will be used to offset capital project borrowing next year. So we're using money achieved or received for debt purposes for actual debt, rather than it going into the general fund, taking a year to be certified in, in free cash, and then again appropriated. And this is all in accordance with the recently passed Municipal Modernization Act. So I'm very pleased. I'm also pleased with the fact that again, for the 13th consecutive borrowing, the town of Arlington received a AAA bond rating. And I'd like to take a moment to read to the board the words in brief, <laughs> less than 32 minutes, Madam Chairman, of what Standard & Poor's had to say. Prior to the sale, Standard & Poor's Global Rating Service, a municipal bond credit rating agency, affirmed the town's long-term rating of AAA. The rating agency cited the town's very strong economy, strong management with good financial policies and practices, strong budgetary performance, very strong budgetary flexibility and liquidity, strong debt, and contingent liability position and strong institutional framework as positive credit factors. And again, this is the 13th consecutive AAA rating the town's received. Um, again, it's $25.6 million. I urge the board to approve the sale and um, hope that you're all not getting writer's cramp by the end of the evening with all the signing you'll have to do. So moved, especially after Mr. Gilligan tells us. So how much did we save, Steve, because of the triple? A? As I put in the memo <laughs> this time, yes. Madam Chairman, for Mr. Greeley's question, <laughs> in calculating out the declining principal payments, the amortization over 29 years and the assertive uh, debt service, the town will be saving $375,000 between a triple A and a double A plus rating. Good for you. Thank Motion you. by Mr. Greeley, second. Second. Mr. Byrne, uh, any questions? If I could, Mr. Gilligan, this is just for my edification, and I should have called. And um, I understand, along with maintaining our AAA bond rating and all the other savings that we have, that this is, I think you said, four hundred sixty-eight thousand dollars less than um, we had anticipated asking to borrow on behalf of the Stratton, but I think you said that it would be applied to the Municipal Moder Modernization Act, and I was just wondering, is there any more, is that just a general statement, or do you already know or anticipate what that 468000 will be applied against? It's already, it's applied to the school project. It's just applied in cash. So instead of borrowing it, 
we have it in cash. So it is used <coughs> for the Stratton School. So any premium realized is used for the projects intended for the borrowing and nothing else. It's just that we have it as cash as opposed to borrowing the money. Okay. Mr. Chaplain? I, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. In this specific case, that amount is uh, debt excluded debt, so it will be $468,000 less that needs to be raised on the tax That's bills correct. Uh, this December. So we're definitely keeping with the commitment when we went to the voters for the amount that we need for de debt exclusion, but we're also stating that we're um, not extrapol extrapolating, but um, this is something that we're, we're cognizant of the monies that we've asked for and if it's something we don't need or we can sort of re-customize or find another way that um, we're definitely not asking for any more, which we can't. Correct. That's and correct. we're finding ways that <clears throat> because of our AAA bond rating as well as the way the projects are coming in to uh, better um, finance with the taxpayer dollars. Am I, I'm not saying it awfully, am I? Yeah, I, I would just say we're minimizing taxpayer impact while maintaining the commitment to get the project done. Okay. Um, anyone else? Um, from my colleagues on a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you, Mr. Treasurer. Thank you, Madam Chairman, and I thank the board for its time. Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. Uh, agenda item two. Sorry, I'm going between paper and <laughs> tablet. Uh, public cable hearing approval transfer of the cable television license, Yankee Cable Partners, LLC, to Radiant Holdings, LP. And we have our esteemed colleague, former town manager, Attorney Marr, who is representing as chairman of the Cable Advisory Committee. Attorney Marr? Uh, former town council. I was going to say you got I a promotion. Never, I said town manager, didn't I? Oh, my uh, Lord. Uh, excuse me. There are times, sir, you serve <laughs> as town manager. I you know, can I, I must to say that. before I begin <laughs> the presentation that I always fight with the irresistible urge to genuflect what I have said before. <laughs> prostrate, prostrate myself. Well, it used to be required. I'm no longer chairman, so <laughs> come may. back. Well, in any event, uh, it's, I'm pleased to be here. Thank you. Uh, we have this matter before you tonight. It's pursuant to chapter, Massachusetts General Law, chapter 166A and 207 chapter of Massachusetts uh, regulations, which deals with the transfer of control of an existing cable license. Uh, there uh, with us tonight is Tom Steele, Executive Vice President of RCN, and I would ask Tom to come up and, and introduce his colleague who will speak to the merits of the transfer. Essentially, what we want to hear, if, what you want to hear tonight is prescribed by that regulation, and, and we would ask that the new uh, holder of the license, or actually the license will stay with RCN, but the transfer of control of the company will be to Radiant Holdings. We would ask them to speak to whether or not they have the requisite management experience, technical expertise, financial capability, and legal ability to operate a cable system under the existing license. Once we have heard that, if you are satisfied, I, will, I have a proposed vote. This is also a public hearing. If you would be kind enough, uh, Madam Chair, to ask if any members of the assembled public uh, have any questions. And at that point, as I say at the end, I'll, I have a proposed motion. Mr. Steele. <clears throat> Thank you. For, for the record, my name is Thomas Steele. Uh, I'm Vice President and Regulatory Counsel for RCN. I was here a little over a month ago for our, our franchise renewal, which we very much appreciate the board support in that. And I told you at that time that we would likely be back very soon because we were in the midst of a sale to uh, TPG Capital. And so here we are. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, Seth Davidson is counsel for, uh, he's a Mint, with Mintz Levin firm and counsel for TPG. We'll explain to you very briefly some specifics that John has asked him to address, and I'll turn it over to Seth. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, uh, members of the board. Uh, and my name is Seth Davidson. I'm with Mintz Levin. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to come to Arlington and, and answer any questions you might have about the transaction. Uh, as suggested, uh, what we're, we have here is a current cable franchise is in the name of RCN Telecom Services of Massachusetts, which is an indirect subsidiary uh, up the chain to Abri Partners. Uh, this summer, Abri entered into an agreement with TPG 
Capital, which is another uh, equity in investment firm, uh, whereby TPG through subsidiaries would take control of the operating companies of RCN, including RCN Telecom Services of Massachusetts. It will not result in any change in, in the identity of the franchisee. It will still be RCN Telecom Services. Uh, in terms of management and uh, technical expertise, the same group that has been operating the systems, managing the systems from Patriot Media, will continue to manage these systems. The same local people here in, in the Boston area will still be uh, the local people under TPG's ownership. Uh, it's really a change in who at the top of the chain is uh, providing the financial backing for the systems. And TPG is a much deeper uh, pocket than, than Avery. So I think it's a good thing for uh, the folks for Arlington and, and for RCN. Uh, TPG, in terms of financial, has about $73 billion uh, uh, of managed assets compared to Avery having on about $5 billion. Indeed, uh, TPG has about $8 billion in uncalled on uh, commitments, capital commitments, just from the groups, the investment funds that are supporting this acquisition. They've also arranged all the financing to cover the transaction costs and uh, have a $150 million revolving credit line for liquidity issues. So I think from a financial stability situation, there's, there's no risk at all to this transaction. Uh, and indeed, they intend to continue to invest in these systems because these systems are obviously, you are seen as the small fish here. And when you're up against Comcast or Verizon, you're going to have to keep investing and staying ahead of the competition. So they, that's their, their goal. Uh, so they have both the management and technical expertise with the current management continuing. They have the financial capabilities. And as far as the legal, again, as Tom mentioned, they recently the franchise was renewed and uh, it is the expectation and intent and indeed obligation to continue to uh, fulfill the obligations of that current franchise. And that's the, what they'll be doing. So uh, that's a very short uh, description if there are any questions. Um. Just to clear up my confusion. Okay. Um, I just want to know, because I'm hearing TPG, I'm hearing Patriot Media, and I'm hearing Yankee <laughs> Cable Partners. So my question is, is the ultimate entity TPG in terms of control and management, and is the penultimate entity RCN? Well, um, or, you know well, how Radiate, Radiate Holdings is a holding company that is ultimately controlled by TPG, but Radiate Holdings is the man has the managerial control over these systems. They've contracted with Patriot to operate the systems on their behalf, but Radiate is a new entity. Currently, under Abri, you have Abri, and then you have something called Yankee Partners, which is then Yankee Parent. I mean, there's a wonderfully complex uh, organization chart, but essentially, Radiate Holdings uh, will have a general partner, it's a partnership, general partner is controlled by TPG, about 79% of the equity comes from TPG, the remaining 20, 21% comes from other investors. Radiate Holdings will, its board manage, they're the ones, for example, that will be dealing with Patriot, who then will be doing the operational side. So you have sort of the investment side, the ultimate management side, and then the day-to-day -day management side. And really, the, what's changing here is Radiate becomes the new holding company, uh, and TPG is the investor above them. And, and it, it is complicated. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm just trying to put it together. Yeah. And so for for as reasons, my colleagues have heard over and over again, I'm a, I'm a core reporter, so I'm trying to yeah. follow what you're telling me right now. TPG is that an acronym for something else, or is that just? Well, I think back in the old old days, is it, it was Texas something TPG. or other, but okay. it's now just called TPG. Okay. It's, uh, it's been around since the 1970s. It's one of the most active uh, private investment firms in the internet and telecommunication space. And they're invested in things like Uber. Uh, they, they're looking for going forward investments uh, in technologies that they think have room to grow. Okay, and do any of these groups have interface with our PEG access? programming like like if we had an issue with peg access you know on behalf of comcast we go to comcast on behalf of rcn we used to go to rcn but now we have you'd, these different entities you'd still be going to rcn telecommunication services that's the franchisee and they'll still be and the same people will be 
there to, to, to deal with. It's simply above them, mm -hmm. uh, that company, the, there's a holding company that holds these operating subsidiaries, mm -hmm. whether it's be RCN of Massachusetts or RCN of Pennsylvania. If, if someone can Some of us up. are very thankful that there's very little change below the investment. <laughs> yes. Tom, Tom doesn't change. He's still. <laughs> so we still interact. Still, with still, Tom uh, will still be here. Okay. And so, uh, Mr. Yeah, Grayley? The chairman still has your number, Tom. Is yeah. that uh, there that you can call you direct? And as you know, we're right down the street right. with our okay. regional office. So yeah. we, we, we love all yeah. that. Be, be, <laughs> all of that will be the same. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dunn? Ma Madam Chair, I suspect that we're never going to see the TPG logo anywhere. It's only the only thing we're ever going to see is RCN. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. Okay. In fact, I'm certain that's exactly right. Okay. Uh, unless you've seen Abri around a lot of times, which I doubt you have. Okay. Um, and as Attorney Mar has pointed out, this is a public hearing. If there's anyone here who would like to speak on behalf of Agenda Item 2, the public cable hearing. Mr. Jamison, if you can say your name and address for the record, even though I think we know you all. Gordon Jamison, 163 Situate, uh, Precinct 12, Town Meeting Member. I only want to hear what Mr. Marr has to say. Mr. Marr is, uh, I think, Chair of the Committee that reviews these things. I read his comments reported in the Advocate recently about another issue related to cable, and so I'd really like to hear what Mr. Marr says, thinks about this. Thank you. With permission of the Chair. Uh, I have reviewed uh, the particulars of the transfer. Uh, in my own personal opinion, I cannot speak for the entire Cable Advisory Committee because we have not had a, a recent meeting. But I have uh, you know, examined the transfer request. And in my opinion, the, uh, it does meet the criteria set forth. And I would respectfully suggest that you approve the transfer. And if you are so inclined, the motion would be that the RCN, the, the, the existing license with the town of Arlington, through and acting by this licensing authority, the Board of Selectmen, approve the transfer of the RCN license to TPG Capital LLC, and that the chairman and or the town manager may sign the appropriate papers to go, appropriate documents to be filed with the uh, Massachusetts Cable Commission. So moved. Second. Moved by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Um, any further? Discussion or question? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. And we'll leave it to the town manager and Mrs. Kropelka or John Marr to indicate who should actually sign the final agreement, whether it's town manager, myself, or someone else. Thank you very much. Okay. And, and I just wanted to ask Mr. Marr in terms of I understand the Cable Advisory Committee hasn't met yet, but I take from your remarks that this is something I would be shocked if they were they had any uh, objection. Okay. We, we do meet, uh, you know, to approve all negotiations uh, with the, the various uh, cable companies and we'll be convening if and when we get an agreement with Verizon and Comcast. But uh, I will be in touch with my, my uh, colleagues. I'd be very surprised if they had a, any objection. Um, I will, at this point, draft the appropriate document uh, to, go with the to go to the Cable Commission and circulate it to uh, your uh, board administrator and the town manager. We'll get it off in due course. It has to be filed within 10 days. Thank okay. you for your consideration. Thank you, Attorney Marr. Thank you, Attorney Davidson and Mr. Steele, and happy we're going to continue to see you. <laughs> okay, uh, we now have our consent agenda, minutes of meetings, October 17, 2016, a request for a special one-day beer and wine license, November 6th, God bless you, at the Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event, Joan and Jim Robio, request special one-day beer and wine license, November 17, 2016, Robbins Memorial Town Hall for the sixth annual Out on the Town Gala to support the Arlington Youth Consultation Center from the Arlington Health and Human Services Charitable Corporation, a vote, special municipal employee Department of Public Works, uh, Director Mr. Rademacher, as well as appointment of new election workers, Jill Dilworth for Winslow Street, Precinct 10, unenrolled. Julia Vale, 88 Park Ave, Precinct 20, unenrolled. It's a motion to approve the consent agenda no, by Mr. Byrne, seconded by Mr. Greeley. Mr. Greeley. Uh, first, is there anyone here for any of the items on a consent agenda? Uh, my colleagues, any questions, discussion? If not, all those in favor of motion by Mr. Burns, seconded by Mr. Greeley, say aye. 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 Unanimous vote. Uh, appointments, we have the Arlington Cultural Council. We have David B. Harris and Asia Kempka, both their terms to expire October 31st of 2019. 
Is Mr. Harris or Ms. Kempka here? If you could come up to the microphone, just say your name and address um, for the record, as well as uh, what your interest is, is in this position and why we're so lucky to have you actually applying for it. <laughs> I'm not sure about how lucky you are. Um, <laughs> my name is Asha Kepka. I am a um, resident of Arlington for the last 18 years. I live at 17 Silk Street in East Arlington. Um, I've been an artist all my life and um, I've benefited from Mass Cultural Council um, fellowships and I I feel like it's uh, probably time for me to participate in the system and help other artists, local artists. So. Okay. My name is David Harris. I'm a resident at 64 Crawford Street. Been an Arlington resident for about 30 years. Have kids in the school system. Proud Arlingtonian, a freelance musician and a music professor at several institutions in Boston. Figure it's time to give something back and maybe give my expertise to the town. Mr. Greeley. So, uh, move approval. But, Second. Um, David, if I may ask, would you hum for me? Oh, no. <laughs> Live snakes. Live snakes. Oh, we'll see. <laughs> so, so you've checked out my bio, and that, 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 that is from an album. In fact, we're having an album release party this, uh, this coming uh, week. It's a band I belong with called Revolutionary Snake Ensemble. And so that's the name of our album, uh, previous album, Live Snakes. It's, uh, was a, it's a New Orleans-based band. So nice. uh, you can come see us at the Once Ballroom uh, this Friday. Pretty Where cool. is it? Where is it? The Once Ballroom in Somerville. We're doing our album release, and I'll be playing tuba and trumpet. <coughs> so uh, New Orleans jazz type? Or? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, sec awesome. Second line. Awesome. Huh. Thank you both for your willingness to serve. I also Thank would you. like to invite everybody to... Um, reviewing my new book that's coming out nationally on November 15th, and I'm going to leave the cards behind. It's okay. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Very cool. Um, on a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Anyone else here would like to speak to this? Any of my colleagues? Yes. Any questions or comments? Mr. Dunn? As you said, we are very lucky to have them. <laughs> that's fine. Uh, with that, a uh, motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Unanimous vote. We have a request for a class. Madam Chair. Yeah. Mr. Dunn, would you turn around? I can't quite read what's on the back, what's, what's behind Let me see if I can use my camera <laughs> to look behind me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Okay. I have a bit of a Halloween costume attached to the back of my head, so. <laughs> you have to wait for the end of the meeting. <laughs> Oy vey. Um, I'm Sicilian, but I was told I can say that. Request Class 2 license, Arlington Gulf, 85 River Street, Adnan Rahim. If you could just come up and state your name and address for the record, or business address for My the record. My name is Adnan Rahim, 85 River Street, Arlington Mass. <coughs> okay, and you're here tonight for a request for a Class 2 license, correct? Yes, okay. Move uh, approval, subject to conditions are set forth. Moved by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Second. Mr. Byrne. Uh, let me just check. I had nothing flagged. I don't think I had anything flagged on this. No. Uh, any discussion <coughs> from the audience, from my colleagues? If not, I'll, on a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Byrne. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. Thank you, Mr. Rahim, for coming in tonight. What's me? Yes. Good luck. Thank you oh, very sorry. much. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Talk to Marie. Open your class. Call, call Marie tomorrow at the Selectman's office, 316 302. Thank you for coming out. Um, I'm not sure if we have anyone signed up for Citizens Open Forum, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Just name and address for the record. My name is Beth Locke. I'm the executive director of the Arlington Chamber of Commerce, 611 Mass Ave. Hello. Um, I just wanted to um, take a moment, quicker than three minutes, to let the board know about uh, something that the chamber is working on in conjunction with the town. We're very interested in um, doing something different this year for our first lights holiday event we'd like to do a really spectacular job decorating Whittemore Park in front of the Jefferson Cutter House um, my office happens to be there and um, in honor of the recently completed renovation of the building we'd like to um, really do a beautiful job on that park and the building and have that be the site of our first lights tree lighting 
Um, so I just wanted to let the board know that we were working on that in case there was any th questions or <coughs> interest. Um, Mr. Chapdelaine? So I j just to, to build on what Beth has said, we, we, we have been working with Beth primarily through planning and DPW, and um, we're going to trying to take a little bit of a different focus uh, in the center. Instead of doing lights uh, in each individual tree, <coughs> doing a more intense uh, holiday display here at the hall at Whittemore Park, as Beth has just described, and then also a Broadway plaza so that we sort of span the entirety of the center. So um, to, to some degree, uh, you know, I, I, I share it because I know one way or the other people always notice what we do and either like it or don't like it, so I wanted the board to be... Uh, <laughs> To and be aware we, of that, but I think this could this could be a very, uh, as it's been described, a very powerful uh, display. And and we will be hosting an event in conjunction with the lighting of the park as well, and the museum is involved. Mr. Dunn? Uh, it sounds great. I know that there in the past first light events, um, you've been like we've included the heights, like a trying to as like as a obviously as a partner. And I know that there's been uh, a lot of efforts lately to get the heights group more organized and is there I'm, I'm sure you're thinking about that well so I think as I, I've been in this position for a year and a half and my under so I've been only through one first lights okay. cycle and um, there is an, a lighting element to that but it has also been more of a shopping style of event so specifically what we're thinking about this year is making it it's very hard to promote a shopping event up and down Mass Ave, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. So our plan is to promote all three parts of town, or all, all of town, um, in their endeavors to you know, market themselves for shopping. But our focus on lighting and a lighting event would be at Whittemore Park. Thank you. Mr. Chapdelaine? And, uh, to, to, and to build on that, the heights and the east have the more consistent decorative light fixtures across both of those uh, sections of town. We're going to be wrapping those in the lighted garland like we did in East Arlington in both the east and the heights, so they'll have a consistent look themselves. Cool. An ever-present scary question uh, with all the uh, construction, paving, graveling, grinding going down in the center. You still anticipate this will be as problem free is I mean you you anticipate this is something you'll be able to accomplish with everything that's going on in Arlington Center we, we do yes okay okay well thank you thank you Beth okay. good to see you thank congratulations you. Thank you. a year and a half we're happy to have you so long <laughs> no no worries um, anyone else with citizens open forum just name an address for the record you don't know my name and I'm hurt it's just cable uh, Gordon Jamison, uh, 163 Situate, and I'm co-chair of the Arlington Recycling Committee. So um, uh, as you probably realize from years past, Arlington Recycles Week is coming up. It's the, usually the, oh, it's the right. week that runs, that includes the 15th of November, and we, we'd like the office perhaps to uh, use the issue of the usual proclamation urging residents to recycle. Um, I'd like to remind the board and those at home that that the next Community Collection Day will not be that week in November, but next spring. That's a decision the DPW has done. But I will also want to remind folks that they can make use of the now monthly recycling center that happens at the DPW yard on Saturdays once a month. The one in November will be on the 19th. And there you can recycle some of the things that were, some but not all, of the things that were collected on Community Collection Day, including rigid plastic, e-waste, but no large appliances, books and media, but no encyclopedias, scrap metal and propane tanks up to the, the standard grill size of 20 pounds, as well as ink and toner cartridges, rechargeable and button batteries, including lithium, nickel cadmium, and lead acid. Um, remi reminds the folks at home and the board that those alkaline batteries, your AAAs and your AA's, go in the regular trash. They, they detoxified those a number of years ago. You could also bring foam packaging limit to white packaging foam only, and packing peanuts. Um, see, please see the details on the website, the town's website under recycling, which is on the, one of the top buttons in most visited uh, locations of the website for additional details about the recycling center and the uh, home. But, but you don't have to limit yourself to recycling on the curb and, and uh, taking some of these items because um, e-waste is accepted <coughs> at the DPW during normal working hours. And there's a variety of books, textile, and shoe drop-off <coughs> bins around town. And of course, you can also donate books to the Robins and Fox libraries, as well as I think the Fox also takes children's clothes and toys. 
uh, Deanne DuPont uh, spearheaded that a number of years ago as part of Community Collection Day. But lastly, I'd like to remember folks to recycle. Um, over the years that I've been involved, we've taken the town's incinerated tonnage from 19,000 tons a year down to about 13,000 tons. But our analysis suggests that still over 50% of the tonnage that we send to the incinerator is recyclable, and we're not recycling that. It's bottles, cans, and paper. So um, we hope that the board will continue to promote recycling so that we can increase diversion away from the incinerator and work to, um, towards our goal, as well as the, go the goal that the board supported a number of years ago, of achieving 50% diversion um, by 2020. Right now we're at about 40, so we need to drop it by another couple thousand tons. Uh, the total municipal solid waste it's a, is 22,000 tons a year. That includes our yard waste and our recycling. We now incinerate 13,000 of that. 50% diversion would be 11,000, and that would, that would be a great accomplishment, I think. And also, of course, every ton we, we don't burn, we don't spend money to burn. So, um, any questions? Mr. Greeley? So, uh, okay. we've reduced it from 21,000 to 13, so, so, um, the total is 21. So, um, the, the, so, yes, I can understand how, so currently, the total municipal solid waste is defined as basically everything we throw away. And, and for, in Massachusetts, that includes not only recycling and yard waste, but the stuff we burn. Okay. And currently, that's 22,000 tons. Okay. Of which um, 9,000 we divert and 13,000 we burn. Okay. Just back when I first got involved, the amount we burned was, was 6,000 tons larger. We were burning almost 19,000 tons. And then there was probably another 6,000 tons on top of that. So I think it was 24, 25,000 tons total. And you've so, reduced the 6,000 over how long a period of time? We've reduced the incineration uh, by 6,000 tons over 12 years. Good for you. Good yeah. for you. So, but, but we have work to do because yeah, right, right, um, right. it could be much lower if we weren't yeah. burning stuff that could be recycled. I'm yelled at in my home if I put recyclable yes. in the yes. regular you know, trash. You're on our, you're on our <laughs> you, have our, you, have, you have a black mark next to your name, Mr. Greeley, at times in, in, our, in our committee meetings. I put out my trash very, very, three very, minutes before uh, the truck, trucks arrived down the street. You, you asked a question about if you put a <laughs> bottle in your trash a number of years ago. I still remember that question. <laughs> okay, thank, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Jameson. Yeah, so, um, um, appreciate that. Yeah. Would you like the proclamation? Do you want to well, yeah, so uh, I, you guys can do it or, or at your next meeting would be good. That would be the week of? Yeah, I can. I can, I can so if you if can I, get the language. If I'm available, I'll come in or someone will or you can just read it. it the language is, I think, the usual language works. Yeah, but works. if someone, you or, or someone else could just provide it to the selectman's office so they don't um, have to go I through. I believe Marie has, has. You do have it? Okay. Yes, it's sort of a boilerplate. I'm just trying it's, to save you. Yeah, I'm just trying sort to of, save you extra time. Thank you, Mr. Sort of a James. boilerplate. I just wanted to make people aware of the fact that the Thank collection you. day is not happening, so they don't show up on that Saturday and with stuff that um, they, they can't do anything with. It always that's that's not optimal, as you know. Any other questions? No, thank you very much. Okay, thank you much. Agenda Good item job. ten: uh, special events, Port Arlington Heights, D'Agostino's Penzi Spices Lot, um, on Saturday, November twelfth, from five to seven p.m. Claudine Schwartz. Support Arlington Heights, if you could just come up and say name and address for the record, even though I probably did half of it right there. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Excuse me. Hi, everyone. I feel like I'm here all the time. <laughs> and, um, Mr. Dunn, I'm, I'm glad that you um, have picked up on the fact that we have a little bit of a trend here in terms of... I noticed some things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So um, we are pleased to have worked with... Um, um, Jim Feeney in um, the town manager's office to um, expedite this and to um, educate us on the process of obtaining a special permit. This event specifically is um, to have a little bit of a celebration in terms of what Support Arlington Heights has accomplished thus far in partnership with the town. <clears throat> as you will recall, we've worked with um, the town manager as well as um, the head of DPW um, in order to execute um, refinishing and painting the poles, which we've gotten a lot of fantastic feedback about. Um, where next step, you have approved a banner design and those will be hung in a week and a half. Um, and we are also working with um, the DPW head to replace the worn welcome sign. So we're hoping to do 
as many as we can of those uh, before the November 12th party, recognizing, of course, DPW is stretched with um, all the work it's doing on parking meters. Um, we have also received um, a permit from the Department of Public Health with regard to food. And so again, this is really to um, energize, celebrate the heights, recognize the town for its accomplishments, and bring um, individuals down to uh, the heights. Happy to field any questions. Mr. Byrne? Um, one, I'll move approval. Um, Second, and I'm sure that you've done this, but just to, um, for my sake, you have worked with the owner, like the business owners and uh, property owners up there to use the lot? That's right. So Sam D'Agostino has um, graciously worked with us on this and is really excited about what's going on. Um, because he owns the space that Penzi occupies, we have also worked with Penzi's. And uh, Mr. D'Agostino has worked with the other tenants that use that property. You'll notice that the event is from 5 to 7. Well, that's not ideal for us in terms of daylight hours. Um, we respect that Mr. D'Agostino has to do well by his tenants in terms of the need for parking. Um, we'll be there a few minutes before in terms of setup, but it shouldn't be um, a disruption at all. Great. Thanks. Okay, is there a second in Mr. Burns' motion by? Second. Mr. Greeley. And uh, I agree with you. I was getting my cold cuts last week, and uh, <laughs> Sam D'Agostino was pitching this event and, and encouraging okay. me to spread the word and everyone else and my okay. colleagues in, in terms of that. Um, so uh, everyone's really excited about that, as well as along with the Chamber of Commerce and the Citizens Group and Claudine and others who we do see a lot of, and that's a fantastic thing for us, maybe not for you, um, for the uh, interest in education that you're bringing to the Heights in terms of highlighting all different areas of Arlington. I'm so happy that you and others have sort of taken on this bailiwick um, to carry it forth to make sure that um, we're getting the message out to everyone in Arlington in terms of the different hot spots or uh, jewels that we have here in Arlington. Um, with that, any other further discussion on a motion by Mr. Byrne, seconded by Mr. Greeley to meet uh, this Saturday, November 12th from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Penzi D'Agostino's lot. Um, if not, all those in favor say aye. Just, aye. It, it's actually a week from Saturday. Aye. Oh, I apologize. Right. Saturday, it's a week November from 12th. This Saturday, I right. apologize. Okay. I said this Saturday. So it's a week from this Saturday. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. And Ms. Chairwoman, I will make sure that um, Ms. Kapelka receives um, invitations so that you can all see them. And I'd also just like to give a special thanks to uh, Mr. Chapdelaine, who's been fantastic in terms of spearheading this and working with the community group. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you've been pretty fantastic yourself for the work you've you. done, Claudine. <laughs> Next, we have agenda item 11, approval memorial for Major Howard Sessler from Alexander, I know Ms. Buster, Alexander <laughs> J. Salapante, who's our chairman of our public memorial committee, where he outlines that um, uh, Major Sessler, as well as, uh, I, I can't think of the rank of, of the uh, gentleman, McGurl, that uh, I guess basically they were high school, elementary school friends, uh, went through World War II. There was a Major Doolittle or something that asked for volunteers, and these two individuals um, who've been together here in Arlington also volunteered to do that. Um, and so now, from what I understand, um, on behalf of Mr. Is it John Johnston? Uh, that made the original request that at the, Mrs. Kropalka? I just wanted to say Mr. Johnson and a uh, member of the McGurl family and the um, Chris Costello, who actually did the bronze the Congressional Medal for um, the Doolittle Raid, there. Uh, they're going to be in on the 14th when Joe can present it to Mr. Costello. So I contacted them. They're coming in on November 14th. Excellent. That was my only other question where we do have something already set up at Summer and Brattle Street for the McGurl uh, family individual members who served in the armed forces. If the McGurl family was aware of this, but I take from Mrs. Capelka's remarks that they've been working in concert yes, together. They've talked from what I understand. I believe it's Lieutenant McGurl. Lieutenant, Lieutenant, Lieutenant McGurl. I apologize. I'm sorry, Jen McGurl and everyone else. Okay. Um, so move we uh, we um, um, approve the recommendation from the uh, Public Memorial Second. Committee. Moved by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Nunn. Uh, any questions, discussion? If not, all those in favor of motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Dunn, say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous <coughs> vote. For discussion, approval, recommendations from parking implementation and... Governance Committee, Mr. Byrne? Yes, yeah, so um, 
you know, um, I, well, I feel like we have updates every <coughs> meeting on this very fluid committee. Um, but so at our last meeting, we, we did get a, um, a couple of requests that we've heard from the audience. Um, the first was to consider, um, you know, pay by space in the Robbins Library parking lot. And, and at first we were thinking that that might not be the best case um, just for really continuity throughout the town um, and or yeah and I think the pricing at the time and so uh, we decided to come back um, on Tuesday and we met as a and uh, we decided that this is probably a good opportunity to pilot a pay by space in town um, you know if, when we were first looking at it in the Russell Commons lot you know we thought it would be a pretty big operation to implement right away and um, you know, with the painting, um, the painting numbers, um, you know, at the space, or even potentially putting up poles with uh, the numbers on them, that might have been a pretty big um, operation to just jump right into. Um, so I think in the smaller lot, if we operate this as a pilot program, we can kind of see how it goes and um, move forward with potential changes um, in other parts of town. But um, it's important to know that the technology is built into the system, um, so we can really go back and forth um, to see what works and kind of tailor, make sure it's tailor-made to the needs of uh, the people who use them. So I would ask um, that you join us in, um, or that the board would vote to approve that based on the recommendation as the Parking Implementation and Governance Committee. Um, did I miss anything, Adam? No, I think you covered that one. Okay. Um, so we can do, as you'll see, there's uh, two requests here. Um, and the other is, had to do with parking meters in front of St. Agnes Church. Um, and so what we found, uh, the, again, at the meeting, looking at the map, there was a handicap spot. Um, so in front of church, if you're going down Mass Ave, there was a handicap spot, and then there were meters, and then there was another handicap spot. So there kind of two meters just kind of hanging out there in the open. So I think what um, you know, we're gonna try to do, and if the board so agrees, would be to move one of the handicap spots uh, where the meter is and move the meter to where the handicap spot is. So, really, so there's not just one meter hanging out in the open, and there's still the same amount of handicaps parking there as well. Um, so there'll still be two handicap spots. Yes, there, we're not. We're, our, we're not. Close to we're the not church. losing any handicap spots, and we're not losing any meters at the same time. Second, or oh, yeah, but yeah, actually, that motion that was by room, was right? it Mr. Grilly? Uh, seconded by second. Mr. Dunn. Uh, Mr. Chaplain, have we covered everything? No, I think that that took care of it. Mr. Dunn. How does the painting solution work in the winter? So I think that's what we're going to find out. Right. Um, it's, you know, it's a smaller lot where it's really attainable or where it's more manageable. And, you know, what we've, um, you know, if you go over to, say, Davis Square or mm -hmm. other places in town, it seems to work they pretty. figure it out. Yeah, and so I think it's something that if um, we'll figure it out. And if, it, you know, it doesn't work, we can always revert back to, you know, um, going back to putting the paper on the car. Okay. So um, on the second issue on the St. Agnes, uh, one of the things I definitely I had a couple different people talk to me about that as well, and uh, in general my feedback to them was that I didn't want to treat other tenants or maybe not other tenants, excuse me, like other uh, establishments different than others. Um, and but I did say that one of the things that I would definitely consider, and I don't know if this is just a, a thought for the group in the future, is that if there's a establishment where they have particular <coughs> use patterns where it makes sense for instance to establish like loading zones for specific days like you know you say like these the were these are ordinarily parking spaces but say on saturday night and sunday morning there are no parking loading unloading only like that's the type of thing that i personally would be very comfortable doing for any establishment that, that had an appropriate thing so i don't know if that helps in the future um, it definitely does um, loading zones have been, they're a funny issue. It's yeah. hard to find the right spot for a loading zone. I meant uh, um, people anywhere. loading as opposed to uh, goods and services. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> no, but I, I do appreciate the flexibility. Um, and I think that as we continue to, um, you know, work on it, that will be helpful okay. um, in guiding our discussion. <clears throat> Mr. Grayley? So uh, I was doing the same thing on numbering the spaces, painting, 
Is that going to mean a pole, or a, is it it, the be, space is numbered? I mean, won't they drive on top of it and not see it? It will be on the space, but it's kind of like up, like. Basically, if you park correctly, it will be, um, you'll be able to still Kevin, see. Kevin, if you park correctly. Off. It'll it, be under your bumper. Yeah. yeah. Like and, and, I, and I do think that it's easy. something that, um, you know, did come up at the meeting with the um, painting, you know, say when it does snow. I think part of, you know, one of the incentives that we have in, in building, you know, this type of area is that, you know, we have to make sure that we service it correctly. So that means, you know, taking care of the spots, making sure that people can park there and, you know, see all the spaces. So. That's something that uh, the group is definitely aware of, and that's part of the discussion as well. And one other question, I'm embarrassed to say at my book club yesterday morning, I was asked, will the new meters take credit cards? They will. That's what I thought. Yes. That was a good guess. <laughs> that was an excellent guess on your the part. The other one was, is it 25 cents every 15 minutes? <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. Yes. And you and your committee, Adam, deserve extraordinary things. It, it's, you know, it's mostly the committee, not so much me, but I agree. Thank you. They, uh, they do an excellent job. Very well done. A lot of hard work. Um, on a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. For approval, agenda item 13, no U-turn sign at Mass Ave and Boulevard Road. Mr. Chapdelaine, our town manager. Thank you, Madam Chair. The board may recall this actually arose from a concern uh, or a number of concerns sent to the board uh, by a school committee member and town meeting member Paul Schlickman, uh, a number of traffic related concerns. Uh, two were in the center, this one was down uh, at the Cambridge border in East Arlington on Mass Ave. Uh, basically what he was describing were people coming into Arlington from Cambridge going straight across the parkway, pulling a U-turn where Boulevard Road is so that they could take the right turn to go back onto the parkway instead of waiting for the left turn signal. Uh, engineering had witnessed this. The police department has witnessed this. Uh, I would, it's called banging a U-turn, but go ahead. <laughs> well, no, uh, no, 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 no. Sorry. <laughs> no, I've seen it. Have you, I've used such terminology. Okay. Uh, so uh, I think there's other words he said there. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, assistant town manager Feeney researched this uh, again with engineering and the police department, and their recommendation was. Uh, to request that the board uh, consider adopting official official no U-turn movement to put on the end of that island. And there, there was a, um, a diagram included in the board's agenda so you could see where it would be located. You, you, this happened to me recently. I was coming from Harvard Square. And you made a U-turn right there? Absolutely oh, not. Are you kidding me? Uh, I didn't think of it, to be honest. <laughs> I've been waiting in that left-hand lane. It's a month that you wait. But so I was following this car which kind of pulled to the right, I thought was pulling into CVS or Monotomy Grill, and then quickly banged the Yui right in front of me. Lucky I didn't try and pass him, because that would be against the law too. It's a one lane down there. Yeah, it, it is a dangerous minute. It is, absolutely. It, uh, Move approval by? Move. So, second. Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Uh, my only comment would be, besides the fact that I recharacterized what the actual U-turn is called, um, I'd, I'd leave it to the town manager in the Arlington Police Department in terms of any initial enforcement. I understand we can't do this, you know, I wouldn't. Um, but honest to goodness, I've seen this so many times, um, as well as probably been a violator and letting the person go ahead of me and had people behind me very upset for having that happen. But it isn't really until you see it happen that you realize what people, and it really is pretty prevalent down there. So I, I want to thank the town manager for following through on this because um, it's something I and my colleagues and others have seen a lot. So uh, if any further discussion on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne, if not all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, unanimous vote. We now have, oh my lord, for discussion and response to Belmont's withdrawal from Minuteman School District, I'd like to ask our vice chair, Mr. Dunn. Thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, the same night that we had our special town meeting, Belmont also had a special town meeting. They voted to withdraw from the Minuteman District, as is their right. They did that because they are not in favor of the new building project. Uh, so, and again, then their voters, as we've mentioned, voted against it. Then their town meeting voted to withdraw. So they've, at this point, done what they need to do to exercise their rights under the new regional agreement to uh, not have to pay for that new building. Like there's, at this point, there's nothing that we can do to make, you know, make them pay the regular assessment. They've 
They've gotten a pre of that. We have a, the official notice of that came today. This morning. Yes. I was here when it came so in. So <laughs> we knew this was coming. Um, and so then the question is, what do we do? So the t we, under the regional agreement, uh, it requires an affirmative vote to block. So if we do nothing, it counts as a yes. And for us to, to block requires 50% of the, or more than 50% of the towns to vote to block. We're still at 16 towns. So even though six towns have left, or, you know, voted, to, we let them go under the new regional agreement, they're actually still a member. So to actually block, we'd have to get to nine towns to have a special town meeting to block. We can assume Belmont will not be one of those. <laughs> and so then we'd have to basically get nine of the, like unanimous of the nine that are remaining, or we'd have to figure out how to get a departing town to you know, bother to have a special town meeting about this district that they're not actually really a member of anymore, which is a long haul. So first off, probably be an effort and futility. Second of all, all, would we actually, I probably should invert this and I should have talked about whether or not we want to do it first. And so that's where this uh, email that I forwarded to you yesterday, which is on, it's also sitting here on our desks, uh, with information from Kevin Mahoney, who is the assistant superintendent there. And he walks through the fact that, so a little bit more about timelines. For the next three years, Belmont is a member. Those are going to be, and it pro uh, Dan Matthews from Needham, is, his opinion is, and I, I have to think he's probably right, is the next three years are gonna be pretty tough for Minuteman because they have uh, some new rules from the state that they have to live under. The building is deteriorating. We aren't investing as much in it because we're gonna, about to replace it. We don't have a new building and so they're gonna be kind of more expensive than other Minuteman years until, and then the same year that we open the new school will be the fir Belmont's first year out of the district. So Belmont's on the hook, pays regular assessment uh, for the next three years. So then our option is if we kept them we could keep them paying regular assessments. And if they leave, then they pay the out of town, uh, out of district tuition. Out of district tuition, regular tuition is lower than what we pay because it's set by the state and we don't get a chance to, uh, to argue with it. So in that respect, Belmont like, gets off cheaper by leaving the district. However, under new state regs, we are going to be able to charge out of district students a capital fee. So we will actually be able to charge Belmont a capital fee uh, because they're an out of district student. And the net of it is, is that the out of district plus capital is more money than in district with no capital. Does that follow? Does that follow? Say so, that, I'm sorry, say that okay. one more time. So out of district, out of district. regular tuition plus the capital fee is more money that if we keep them in where we can, there'll be regular tuition, but no capital because of these votes that they've taken. So we're gonna get more money if we let them out. And if they're in, uh, like, like this way, they don't get a seat to vote. And if they ever wanna come back, we get to renegotiate, and maybe we can get a better deal from them. Uh, and also contained in this memo, uh, Kevin Mahoney carries uh, the superintendent's recommendation that we let them out. So for all those reasons, let them out. Oh, yeah. I um, have a question that may not necessarily apply to any of these cases and points. I just want to um, put it before you yeah. and the town manager. And if it's something that neither can answer tonight, that's fine. Um, and it's again my sort of vested um, interest. I'm I'm thinking about the scenario for Belmont the town of Belmont in terms of their special education students that go to Minuteman. I, I really don't see any language from, and I'm not saying this is an aspersion from Mr. Mahoney, it basically talks nuts and bolts with them, you know, when you get down to the rivets and the grivets and everything else. Um, in terms of, I know that um, Arlington and Lexington and Belmont and many of the other, with the exception of four that are leaving, um, send, um, pretty substantial or close to substantial amount of students um, to Minuteman for the special education program. So I'm just wondering if as we move forward, unless either of you gentlemen have an answer to that question right now, when you're talking about um, the students from Belmont that go to Minuteman under the special education vocational programs, which also includes transportation and um, uh, special education assistance um, is there something 
that I'm, I'm thinking of people in Belmont, not that it's for us to think about, but I'm just thinking of a case in point that could arise. Uh, what I don't see in here is language or verbiage to address that student population, which may be, it's either 16 or 36 students, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, uh, if for some reason as Belmont goes through this process that those 16 or 36 um, current students under special education, those parents petition of some sort. What it is, I don't see anything in here. We're just talking about the nuts and bolts of Belmont pulling out and the kids there. Um, if as we move forward, if we could ask Mr. Mahoney, unless anyone else has an answer to that question right now. What's the exact question? Can my question is, Mr. Attorney Heim. Uh, Madam Chair, if, if your question is what happens to Belmont students who have, under special education law, a right, if you will, to a um, certain IEP and placement, um, Belmont does have a dilemma there, and I'm not sure how they will resolve it insofar as under special education law, um, it's, they assume some substantial risk by unilaterally uh, moving a student from a placement under a specific IEP. I would assume that what they'd have to do without obviously representing Belmont is within the next three years have to phase out um, placements there if they can't guarantee them. Okay. It's, it, it's a it, concern. Okay, if, it, if it's appropriate as we move forward in the process, um, my colleague, Mr. Dunn or Mr. Chapdelaine, just ask the question. If it's something they don't have to answer, that's fine. I'm just curious in terms of thinking of knowing that uh, population um, that usually starts out at the Chenery School and then goes up to Minuteman. I'd just be curious. Um, not that it's really anything that we need to oversee, but. In, yeah, in general, Belmont loses its rights to place students at uh, Minuteman. And so that's gonna, and that will be true for special ed and regular ed. And so the, in the future, once, if this, once this is executed, Belmont will, their students will apply to Minuteman just like other out of district students. Mm -hmm. And Minuteman gets to accept them or reject them according to what it, 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 it can do. And so obviously right now, Minuteman has a lot of out of district students and, and it will continue to need them for a while. So it's gonna, those students from Belmont presumably are gonna have a relatively easy time getting placed at, Bel at Minuteman for the time being. Whether that's true in five years or 10 years or 15 years, that's gonna be anyone's guess. That's really, and that's why Belmont says, we're not worried about it. Minuteman's gonna always have space, it's gonna be easy. They might be right, they might be wrong, in which case they're gonna be really struggling. Well, I can just tell you having walked that road regarding the special education students that I'm familiar with and have dealt with, um, I'll leave it to Belmont, but I, unfortunately for the parents, I think they may be in for quite an unfortunate surprise on that, and that uh, is really kind of sad. But I'm certainly in favor of, um, my question would be to Mr. Dunn, um, I'm inclined from what I'm reading and and what I've heard that um, Arlington will not um, express any objection to Belmont <clears throat> being allowed to with withdraw from the district. Um, do you, Mr. Dunn or Mr. Chapdelaine, if we go down that course, anticipate any sort of a special town meeting before our annual town meeting on this particular issue? That's, uh, that's exactly the question we're doing. And if we, if we as a board of selectmen think we should do something, we need to call a special town meeting and it has to happen in 60 days. But I'm saying- From that, October 26th. Uh, 20th. Right or no? Uh, 20, Am I reading this wrong? The letter's dated the 28th. The 28th. Oh, I thought it was 60 days following October 26th, 2016. Uh, the second paragraph from Mr. Horton to Ms. Lucas. Oh, Lally. yep, you're right. Okay, thank you. Only, <laughs> I don't mean to be a stickler. The, yeah, because the 26th, yeah, evidently when they received it. Right. That's interesting. I would have thought it was the 28th, but you know, those two days. But that would be Mr. Greeley. So, uh, so Belmont, yeah. by withdrawing, and the other six communities, do they now have to offer the, on their own? They have to find a way to provide this type of. Uh, education yeah. in their own high schools? No, they don't have to offer it, they just have to provide it, which means they have to find a place for these students to go. And so, for instance, Arlington even, like, we, so in Arlington satisfies its obligations by sending people to Minuteman, but if there's a program that someone wants that Minuteman doesn't have, we actually pay out of district tuition to send them somewhere else. Right. And, that, and so that is, that's gonna be 
but the vast majority of our students are satisfied by programs at Minuteman. And whereas Belmont's gonna, like they they put up a they put out a, their su school superintendent put out a memo about some ideas that he's thinking about. And if you read his memo, you know three of them are non-starters from the beginning. But realistically, I think my my personal bet is is that most of them are going to end up back at Minuteman. The question is how long will that work for them? And, you know, I don't know, if Mr. And I'm just saying there's no, in my opinion, uh, foresight or outward thinking for their special education students, to which we have no obligation, with the exception of, you know. Arlington sort of, special ed, yeah. Yeah, you know, in, in, in terms of, you know, whatever. Mr. Byrne? What happens if they don't get accepted? Uh, then, yeah, Bel then Bel I don't actually know, like, in the, gr the nitty gritty, if you have, like, a student who says, like, I want agriculture, and then they apply it to all these out of district, they and they get don't in. get it anywhere. I don't know where that, uh, I don't know. Interesting. And, um, Probably a private tutor or something, I would guess. I don't even yeah. Yeah. Are you, Are you interested in private tutor? <laughs> <laughs> um, and I actually, going, going through the numbers that were sent over, I, they were on the bottom line for total assessments. It really it wasn't a big jump for, say, Arlington's total assessments. It didn't seem. Yeah, I think that the real pain is, uh, like, the parts that are, it's, it's more risk for Arlington with Belmont gone because if if it turns out that the build that the school they can't fill the school and the costs go up it would have been nice to spread that cost around 10 and now it's being spread across nine so in the if things work according to plan Belmont leaving doesn't matter at all if other than the fact that it's like I, I think I shouldn't say it doesn't matter at all I think that both Belmont and Minuteman are a little bit less separate I think that they would we would all be stronger and better if we were together but the real pain would happen in bad scenarios. In good scenarios, it doesn't have too much impact. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And, and before I take what I think I'm hearing from Mr. Dunn, perhaps as a recommendation to allow Belmont to exit the district, as well as to allow the entities to collect a capital fee, I just would ask um, Mr. Dunn or the town manager, in terms of long range thinking, is there any sort of two, three step long range thinking out that if something really goes askew that we're kind of preparing for it right now or is it like, like I'm thinking as, as you think of the process and how it goes and if at some point things veer far right or far left um, is that something we're anticipating right now or is it something that if we take a vote tonight to recommend to allow Belmont to um, exit the district which is what I'm hearing and probably the other uh, eight or nine communities will do um, in order to allow us to c collect a capital fee. We don't see any bumps in the road. So what I'm saying right now is just thinking long range, is there anything that once we take this vote, it's pretty much going to go smooth sailing straight, or is there like one thing, if this, then that, a case point scenario, or no? Do you know? Do you, I, I would say um, there, there is no clear situation that's a if this, then that that I see. I think the test is, as Mr. Dunn described a little while ago, after the school is built, does it fill up? Do we, do we meet the 628, possibly exceed the 628, either all in district or still from a combination of in district and out of district? Mm -hmm. If we don't, then there could be more significant financial matters or issues than we are currently projecting. Um, specifically to this question before the board tonight, um, what I see is a pretty clean-cut question of trying to keep them in provides no financial benefit to Arlington under the laws and the rules that we're playing under. Um, so I, don't, I see letting them out doesn't necessarily change that longer-term approach, as you said. Um, I think the longer-term approach, and this is something uh, Mr. Dunn and I have been speaking about, is working with the school building committee, trying to control the costs of the school building project, getting it done on time and under budget, so that we can start <clears throat> to work with the district and have a very marketable, brand new, you know, high tech, modern school that should be able to fill those 628 seats. Okay, and then my last question would be, as we go down the road with everything and now we're letting, and now I believe five communities are exiting? Uh, six of, we've already let, six Belmont will be, be seven. seven. Yep. Um, in terms of our vote, whether it's weighted or otherwise, are we already established, Arlington, what our vote will be going forward, whether it's capital improvements, uh, 
or any other decisions, or is that something that because after we let the other six, six communities, if everybody else agrees, that our vote will once again be reweighted? So the know? yeah, so the rules of how the weighting will happen are set, but the weighting itself happens on July 1st of every year, depending upon rolling enrollment. Mm -hmm. So the actual percentages get determined, redetermined every year. So yes, on July 1st will be the first date where we get a significant increase in our percentage because July 1st will be the date that the first six towns leave. <clears throat> so if I make the statement, which what people have said to me, Arlington sends the most students to Minuteman, that should so somehow be re reflected in terms of decisions going forward upon recommendation of consultants and superintendent and, and school committee boards. You're saying every July 1st of every year, you look at the member communities that are there, the number of students that they send, and then the weighted vote is extrapolated or tallied. It is. I can saying? look. I can t give you the exact <laughs> formula if you want, but it's not. It, uh, we don't get exactly the proportion of the students, but we get. We will have by far the largest vote at that table. Okay, so it's not like as it was in days past, nope. a one to one. Arlington gets one, and <coughs> excuse me, is. A town that sends one or two students gets the same vote as Arlington does. So it will be some terms of weighted. You know, it, frankly, as many of the smaller communities smirkingly say to Mr. Dunn and I, this is now the Arlington Minuteman School District because we get the weighted vote, which makes us the big dog on the school committee, and we also get the benefits of the capital formula. So we really did get both of the key things that the town was looking for for a long time. As we should. Yes. Agreed. Absolutely. And, and as we move forward in terms of whenever every July comes, um, whenever the town manager, our colleague, Mr. Dunn, deems appropriate, similar to what we're doing with our facilities uh, here in Arlington uh, in terms of maybe once a year, or once every other year, um, asking for some sort of, uh, a, I literally was up in Burlington, across from the Burlington Mall for a couple of residents from uh, Arlington that were up there. But we're talking about the Minuteman votes that went through Arlington and said the same thing. You know, we rebuild these schools and we don't maintain them. So one of the things I would say to put further on down the road is um, when appropriate in whatever entity, whether it's Superintendent Boquellen or someone else, um, see if they have something similar to what we're doing with our facilities, town and school that Ruthie Bennis came in at our last Sluckman's meeting, if they have something like that set up. And they may already have. I'm not trying to cast aspersions that they haven't, but one of the things I've heard over and over again is you come to the voters, you ask us to you know, uh, update, renovate, rebuild these schools, and then you don't maintain them. And I think in terms of uh, Arlington schools and town facilities, I think with our facilities directors and our facility department, we're really kind of in our school dude program, which this week with the heat, that's a whole other thing, but I, I think we've addressed that. So that, that's just long range. So I'll leave it to Mr. Dunn in terms of exactly what his motion is regarding Belmont exiting. I believe your motion is to allow. Uh, I move that we take no action and do not call a special town meeting and permit Belmont to leave the Minuteman Regional School District. Second. Motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Byrne. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Now the very hot topic for discussion and approval, agenda item 15, uh, board and manager goals, physical year 2016, 2017, Mr. Chapdelaine. This is the hot topic? Well, wait to see what my remarks are. Uh, oh. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. All right. I actually have one thing, but go Scared ahead. Scared me. <laughs> uh, so the, this is the, um, the, the follow-up to our goal-setting session over the summer, and I, I apologize that it took to the last meeting in October to bring it back before the board. Um, as I do every year, I, I try to capture all of the, uh, the comments made by the board. I, I know that I don't always, so happy to take comments tonight and make any further uh, revisions, and if necessary, come back at the following meeting. But I, I do think I captured at least the, the core of what we discussed for the Board of Selectmen's goals and then tried to transmit those to the town manager's goals so that they... <clears throat> it, 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 at least matched um, where appropriate. So uh, I guess rather than walking through each one, I don't, I don't know how much of an opportunity the board had to review it, but happy to take comments tonight uh, or if the board wants to receive review and then provide further comment, whatever the prerogative of the board is. 
Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to receive or approve, or uh, how, how do my colleagues want to get this for discussion? Or Mr. Grilly? So move approval, um, and the reason it took him so long to get them to us is because he's so busy implementing them day and night. Um, we we ha have an off-site meeting where at the strong encouragement of our current town manager for the past few years, we set our the selectmen's goals, we review uh, how did we do, uh, what do we need to change, can we drop any, because we certainly always <coughs> add, add more. Sorry. And then the manager uh, establishes his goals uh, <coughs> based on ours, um, and each year we go through this and if you will, uh, do a report card on uh, what he has done, and uh, he has done an outstanding job. I have no changes to the goals at all. I move approval. Moved by Mr. Greeley, seconded by? Second. Mr. Dunn, any further discussion or questions? The only thing that, um, and I have had conversations with Mr. Chapdelaine on this and have indicated that my memory of that Saturday morning meeting that Mr. Greeley referenced, Kevin. Mm -hmm. I don't know when I'm supposed to say Mr. or not. <laughs> um, but I know, I know it came up for discussion, and I don't recall, and I believe the town manager, Adam, also doesn't. Um, I do recall the discussion. I don't recall that it was adopt adopted in any sort of formal way, but I do recall that there was discussion about looking into it, and it was regarding town celebrations. and. It was, I remember bringing up about Town Day, which is the only event that is totally self-sufficient. I mean, we pay for Tuesday, Thursday, goose poop pickup, you know, down at Spy Pond. We pay all gray bill invoices for police, fire, public works, et cetera. It's the only event that's 100% totally self-sufficient. And I do remember having a conversation about perhaps looking into um, what sort of policy or protocol we have, and in, in, in my opinion, in one of the things I've said is, you know, when I first got on the town day committee, it was a, a certain event that did some things, and then when I came on board, we expanded it with Suzanne Forster Casilio from the Jason Russell House, really got it big, and we were told, which we accepted, which I did an awful lot of work on my own, <coughs> that you have to be totally self-sufficient for the, you know, paying for Toggy to come in from the MDC, DCR, you know, pay for the stage. And then when I walked away from it, unfortunately, well, unfortunately for them, but fortunately for the town, those duties and responsibilities, largely in part, with, with the exception of Kathleen Darcy and Cambridge Savings, who, who have stayed on board, fell to the selectman's office, which has become yet another job, and it's a mammoth task for fundraising. So I remember having the conversation about um, because I know we have other events that um, the town sort of co-sponsored in some way. So I was saying it was my personal opinion, not the Board of Selectmen's office, any individual or, or total entity thereof, um, that uh, if some consideration could be given to that. So I don't know that we adopted that as a goal, but I, Mr. Chapdelaine, help me. So I, I included Adam. language that tried to get at that. Is it in there and I page, missed it? Page two. Uh, of the document, mm -hmm. section three, uh, goal F, consider the development of a comprehensive policy for aligning the planning and implementation of the numerous special events now happening across so town. So that's where it would go, okay. I, if, if you want more specific language, I think that's mm -hmm. acceptable too. And, and if, if someone said to me, well, what are you trying to shoot at here, Diane? What I'm trying to shoot at is, if appropriate, if we could begin the discussion or begin the investigation of Town Day is anywhere from a thirty to fifty thousand dollar per year event, depending on the event and the number of entertainers and the gray billing invoices. Whether we could have some sort of appropriation from the town, and I don't want to put a number out there, you know, five, ten, whatever. But I, I just wanted to kind of put it on the table with the town manager, and then come back to my colleagues that we look at that to try to lessen some of the load which really is 99.5% of our employees in the Board of Selectmen's office, because I know if, if I was told you're going to raise 50, but you can get 10, so it's only 40 or something like that. So that's where I'm going with that. And I'm hearing from, at, from the town manager that that's under 2F or 3F? 3F. 3F, and we'll just go forward from, the, from there. It sounds like that's probably more of a 
discussion to have with the finance committee if you're trying to get money for it as opposed to an actual goal of the selectman or town manager. Is that along what you're thinking? I'm thinking that after the town manager does whatever he wants to do, no exhaustive, cumbersome thing, presents it to the board, I'd certainly be happy to go to the finance committee to say this is something, and I, I can. Okay, yeah. Or, or we can take it out of that goal if you don't want it in there. No, it doesn't really matter to me. Mr. Grayley. I, I agree we should, if we can, find some funding for it. Um, um, the number one sponsor this year, I believe, gave 8,000. Um, and then there are a number of other, you know, uh, Leader Bank, uh, Watertown Savings Bank, another number of other uh, of businesses that contributed to it. But this is our town debt. So, you know, I, I would support trying to find at least uh, $10,000 uh, so that uh, rightly, you know, we should put in, you know, what we can, but of course we realize there's lots of uh, people that are looking for money from all sorts of different places, but uh, so however you want to go about it, Madam Chair, I support okay. it. Well, well, I'm hearing from the town manager that it's in 3F. Yeah, I mean, if, there, if there's another way you want to put it, though, I... No, no. If you you say that encompasses it, that's fine. That was certainly my intention. Was having heard Thanks. that message at and the I, meeting and, and, and afterwards, yeah. that was my intention. And, and if the end of the day we go down this road and it turns out we can't get any money from the town, then we can't get any money from the town. But for me, Town Day weekend, Friday night, Saturday, is really the penultimate event that Arlington puts on. So, on a motion by Mr. Oh, Mr. Dunn, I'm sorry. I, uh, I'm glad it's on the list, and I would say that, to I think we should. And I'm, I'm sure the town manager is already thinking about this. It's not just the money. It's also the fact it's the, the labor that's coming yeah. out of mm -hmm. the, 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 town, the town's offices, both the Slugman's office and the, you know, the support that comes out of DPW and stuff like that. And we support like a number of events. To Feast of the East it came up, I remember, during the conversation, a bunch of other ones. And so it's not just thinking about, it, it's not just like saying, hey, can we get $10,000 out of the finance committee and town meeting? It's about, are we, like, are, are, how are we looking at these different events? Are we looking at them relatively equitably, and not even necessarily equitably like in terms of what does the town get out of these events, and are we using our resources correctly for the different events? And so I, I think it's m more than just the 10,000, and I think, or more than just a little bit of money, and I think that. Uh, yeah, that's why I use the word align to try yeah. to make it seem like mm -hmm. they were all mm -hmm. in their scope being treated in a similar manner. Yep. And I, I feel like equity was maybe the wrong word, so that that's how I was thinking yeah. about it. And like for instance, and uh, you know, we kick off the Alpine Street, uh, you know, block party. It doesn't deserve fifty thousand dollars because it's exactly the same as every other event. <laughs> you know, we have to be smart about, you know, what the community is involved in or what their size and scope are and stuff yeah. like that. Okay. Well, I, I want to thank Mr. Grayley. Well, I, I wonder, uh, is our board administrator still await down down there? She's here. I wonder whether the mechanism is do we put this into the selectman's budget? But Mr. Dunn's point is really well taken that they put in more than ten thousand yeah. dollars worth of everything. hours in terms of the work that they put we pay in. For everything, every public works department, nobody person else that works, does that. Police department, police, no, nobody. Right. But all that you raise from private donations, yeah. right? To take out of that, the, we I raise, will say yeah. that the fire department. Um, Chief Jefferson gives us three people for the fireworks and on on, ta on town day for the he takes um, he I think he pays for two people as far as the uh, small house and what have you and Chief Ryan um, pays for a Saturday to have um, Dusty in the dog yeah, we don't pay for him and that's the only thing that we don't pay for mm -hmm. and everything else we pay for. Well, so if it, if it uh, is okay with you, Madam Chair, how about I, as part of this goal, before the warrant filing deadline, or before at least the budget submission deadline, mm -hmm. come back with analysis of how much in-town resources are used for, whether or not it's being paid for by the event or being supported by that town budget, how much is being expended on these various festivals, and then we can have a discussion about what the board might want to pursue for the FY18 budget. Is that okay with my colleagues? Yep. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Sorry to belabor no, this one. 
Um, so on a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Dunn, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. Thank you. We now have approval for the opening of the annual, for the warrant for the annual town meeting, uh, April 24th, 2017. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, I'll entertain a motion that we open the warrant on Tuesday, December 6th at 8 a.m. to close on Friday, uh, Tuesday, December 6th, 2016 at 8 a.m. to close on Friday, January 27th, 2017 at 12 p.m. Uh, motion by Mr. Grayley. Mr. Grayley, seconded Second. by Mr. Byrne. Uh, any discussion on that? I forgot to check like when Easter is and when the other holidays, religious holidays are. And I, I just as Mr. Don is looking that up, I just want to point out that this board in the past uh, four to six years has, when I first got on the board, the warrant would be open a week, week and a half. Um, we're now, uh, if this vote goes through as uh, proposed, uh, we're opening it the first week of December on December 6th. Uh, we're closing it at the end of January, on January 27th, um, which certainly gives an, I believe, an ample amount of time and opportunity for people to, uh, uh, craft and draft and submit warrant articles. As we always say, it's not a requirement, but we ask that just for um, warrant articles that are be sub being submitted to have the best success that um, avail themselves of the opportunity uh, to uh, submit them to our town council, Attorney Heim, to basically look into it. I remember one year somebody submitted a warrant article and didn't do that and didn't add the language at the very end that said, or take any action related there too. <coughs> and after discussion on town meeting, it came out that something would have passed, but because they didn't have that little phrase at the end that town council would have picked up that, or suggested that you want to put in. Um, so again, it's not a requirement, but we certainly recommend it in terms of, you know, the best success in uh, presenting your uh, warrant article to town meeting. <coughs> you can certainly avail yourself of the town moderator but again, it's not a requirement. So I believe for, <coughs> sorry, I have a feather in my throat, the annual town meeting for April 24th, 2017 to open the warrant uh, Tuesday, December 6, 2016 at 8 a.m. Close it on Friday, January 27th, 2017 at 12 p.m. Motion by Mr. Greeley. Mr. Greeley, seconded by Second. Mr. Byrne. Uh, and I'm just putting forth what was put forth before us. So any discussion on those dates? Uh, Attorney Heim, we've said it correctly. Okay, so on a motion by Mr. Grilly, seconded by Mr. Burke. Right. Sorry, I came oh, up with sorry. a question. Yes. No, I just did. Uh, did, we, <coughs> did we warn the moderator? <laughs> did we warn the moderator? After you voted, then we'll send him the yeah. notice tomorrow and okay. tell them all. All right. It's gonna be open. Okay. Yeah, it actually it was his article. To give a ginormous amount of time, which is the way it should be. On a motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Byrne. On any further discussion, if not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those aye. opposed, unanimous vote. We now have new business. Mrs. Kropalka. First of all, I'd like to ask the lady over there to introduce herself. This must be a new person from the advocate. From oh, thank you for joining with us. Yeah, yeah. But she's press. Thank you. Thank you for hanging in with us. Coming in, right? Okay. We do have someone new from the advocate. Yeah, he was here. They were going to be here tonight. Yeah. Then I said, well, maybe something. Ram or. Yeah, he was here at the last meeting. He met. He met the board at the last meeting. Yeah. And he was going to come back tonight. He's been to one meeting and hasn't come back. <laughs> Is there a message? Will we see you at the next meeting? Yes, November 14th. Yes, I'm yes. kidding. <laughs> Thank you. Not yet. Thank you. Bram. Bram. Correct. Yes. yes. Yeah. Thank you. The only thing I have under new business is our early voting has been a huge success. So today, from 8 to 4, I think we had 600 and maybe 45 people. Today. Just today. A thousand on Saturday. Yeah. Two thousand and nine hundred. 
2000. So are we at 5,000? Over 5, six. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I was here on Saturday talking to Marie, there's people asking, can I change my vote? They, vo they voted, but then they saw something on the news. There's 21 states that allow you to vote up to three times in a presidential election. How do clerks figure that out? Massachusetts has well, not accepted that because yeah. we could never handle it, never handle it. But some of them are doing it. We've had people call today to come in and say, can I change my vote? <laughs> and on that particular item, just because it's the first time we've done this, um, when Mrs. Kropelka and the town manager feel it's an appropriate time in December or January or whenever, if we could just kind of have an agenda item, you know, 10, 15 minutes max, sort of a recap of what we did, how we executed it, and, all I can and say is what thank recommendations you. for the future. A big thank you to Richard Sullivan and, and all my coworkers that have been down there. They have worked. You have no idea what it's like. It's just constant, constant. So they, it's a big thank you to them to get this off the ground, believe me. Well, and my thing would be I know that we're really taxing the resources of the selectman's office and town manager's office. Um, whenever we do a recap or regroup in terms of how this um, was executed, Richardson. if there's anything else um, uh, or any other department, town clerk or whomever, that you know we need to sort of bring in the fold to make sure this runs as expeditiously as possible. So I'd look to... Oh, I would I absolutely think the town clerk would, should absolutely be included in any recap. Okay. So, uh, but I'll leave it to um, the town manager and our board administrator in terms of when you all decide to have the discussion with whom. And I don't mean to limit to just town clerk's office, maybe it's something else, but, um, and when you feel it's appropriate. And it doesn't have to be December or January, it may be further out than that, but before we have the next case in point that we go through this, that we have it in his agenda item, whether I'm chair or a member of the board of selectmen or not, whenever you all down. deem it's appropriate. Which is writing everything down that's okay. taking place. So I, I mean, the two of you understand where I'm going with this in terms of, I mean, it's the first time we've done it. I think we've done a pretty good job, you know, <laughs> considering, job. you know, we got, you know, the notice that we did um, and everything's pretty much going off without a hitch. And thank you <laughs> to the town manager to making sure in, in, in terms of the fil facilities that everything's going on, but I know that kind of hit a hitch in the beginning, but I'm not so much focusing on that in terms of I want to make sure everybody who should be at the table as we move forward with this endeavor is there so that um, we're not overburdening uh, the selectman's office, town manager's office, unless the two of you all say that's basically the two entities that should be doing it. But, um, but Mrs. Kropelka, I'm sorry, I jumped in on your... That's all I have. Attorney Heim? Uh, just one bit of new business um, that to keep the board up to date on the oak tree proposal to develop the Mugar property. Um, as I had uh, reported to the board previously, we did expect that there would be an appeal of the town of the ZBA's assertion of safe harbor status. Um, the one and a half percent calculation that's been discussed quite a bit. The developers did in fact appeal uh, to DHCD. DHCD has um, 30 days to examine that appeal and um, make a ruling. After that, there will be some determination that will have to be made about whether or not the developers or the town will appeal whatever DHCD um, comes up with. But um, we should not expect that uh, tomorrow, uh, for example, that there will be a meaningful discussion because the appeal effectively stays um, any proceedings in the uh, hearing of a 40B application. Thank you. And, and just to piggyback this, which will take care of another my new business item, I just want to thank uh, ZBA on recommendation of this Board of Selectmen um, has elected a chair and vice chair. As we all know, the chair is now uh, Patrick Quinn um, and the vice chair is Christian Klein, as well as their um, setting up a structure in terms of as they move forward and having hearings, especially where they'll have to record, take and record testimony um, they're setting out a parameter for that as well as the town manager um, as well as when needed attorney Heim or anybody else um, is, is working with them to sort of make sure that we were as efficient as possible in, in doing everything that we should do so I I do want to thank the Zoning Board of Appeals for listening to this this board's recommendations in terms of a chair and a vice chair 
and really setting up a structure. And I want to thank the town manager and his um, department head and any other person he deems appropriate for working with the ZBA and continuing to work with the ZBA as they have done in the past to effectuate that. Uh, anything else, Attorney Heim? Uh, just that uh, also that uh, Attorney Whitten and I have been continuing to consult and revise and work on the uh, selectman's letter that uh, will be before you on November 14th. Thank you. Mr. Chapdelain, town manager. Uh, the only uh, piece of new business I have is last Thursday I was able to attend uh, two ribbon cuttings in about a 45 minute span mm -hmm. right, right, right here in the Civic Block. Uh, one here uh, in the Lions hearing room. Uh, it was actually a ribbon raising for the the capital campaign which is being kicked off for the Arlington Center for the Arts to outfit their, uh, their will be space in the Central School and that was a very nice event that the rain had uh, changed into this room. We were supposed to be outside and then right after that we walked across the street and cut the ribbon on Tony's All Sports Barbershop. So we had a uh, and, and then neither instance uh, or instance did the um, Chamber of Commerce's scissors work to cut the ribbon. So. There were, there were some good laughs and smiles had by all at the, uh, at the expense of those scissors, but that's all I have for new business. Mr. Grilly, but Seeing I'm the bummed. picture of Adam with his teeth on that ribbon <laughs> as he tried like the duct to tape. get it started, but uh, I'm sorry I missed those. I, um, I really have been in uh, San Diego, Toronto, and Washington, D.C., and uh, missed the special town meeting, and sorry I missed those ribbon cuttings. Uh, I just have one piece of new business. Um, the Rotary Club uh, tomorrow will be putting 120 uh, flags on the Arlington High School uh, front lawn, and it's the Flags for Heroes project where, uh, you know, whoever is a hero in your life. Did you buy two or three with my name on them by any chance? Only two or three, huh? <laughs> 20. <laughs> <laughs> but it's right in my right hand, it's 120. That was the number. Cool. Uh, so drive by there in the next couple of weeks. I think it's going to be a pretty impressive sight. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Byrne? Um, I, I guess that, you know, with Halloween being tonight, I hope that everyone drives home safely. And, um, you know, I hope that a lot of trick or treaters got plenty of candy. So thank you. Mr. Dunn? Nothing. Okay, um, as we spoke about earlier, you can do early voting up until, I believe, November 4th. Uh, we have information on the town website as well as in front of town hall. Uh, on Wednesday, November 2nd, Arlington High School, we will be hosting the Middlesex League Cheerleading Competition for all girl and co-ed. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, Arlington's really uh, getting into that. And with that, I believe I might call on Mr. Greeley regarding a motion to enter executive session, Mr. Greeley. Thank you. I move the board enter into executive session under purpose seven to comply with the provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 22, in order to review any vote upon the release of presently sealed executive session minutes and further that this board not reconvene in open session. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Byrne. Mrs. Kropelka, roll call. Mr. Sorry, Mr. Dunn. Uh, I just have a, uh, yes. This is mine. Yes. 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 But I do have, we, we don't have to come out because we're going to vote for them in executive session to release them. So we don't have to come out to do that publicly. Is that the idea? I, that was actually my question, Mr. Greeley. So I was just thinking that we should we needed to come out just for the purposes of saying that we're out and then adjourning and then we can adjourn the meeting without anything else. Well, I thought now I'll turn to Attorney Heim unless someone tells me differently that we, well this vote will bring us into executive session. We'll discuss what we need to discuss. We'll then take a motion in executive session to come out of executive session and we'll be done. But you tell me if that's not uh, so. In this particular case. Uh, the vote to release the minutes doesn't necessarily have to be done twice. Um, so you don't have to, it's not like an employment contract. We have yeah. to come out of executive session to vote and approve it in public. So if you want to approve the release of the executive sessions, you could minute uh, in minutes in executive session, you could, but if you want to come out, there's no problem with coming out either. It's just a matter of, of preference. What is the pleasure of my colleagues? I would rather come out just to vote adjourn in public. Okay. Okay, so the, Mr. Grilly's uh, motion will be that, and further that this board shall rec reconvene and uh, uh, make sure I say this right, 
uh, Attorney Heim or Mr. Chapdelaine, that, that this board shall reconvene an open session solely for the purposes of approving the uh, release of previously sealed executive session minutes. So yes, as I understand the motion is to go into executive session for reviewing uh, and approving the release of any executive session missions that are, minutes that are currently closed and the board will come out of executive session and reconvene an open session. So Mr. Grayley, friendly amendment, take out the word not, that it says that this board not reconvene an executive session and we'll say that this board reconvene an ex executive session. Okay. Yes, that's true. Okay, still seconded by Mr. Byrne and we still had the roll call. Do we need to do that again, Mr. Uh, Attorney Heim? Yes. Mrs. Kropelka? Yes. 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 We're now in executive session. Having coming out, having coming out of executive session, I'd like to entertain a motion from my, one of my colleagues to uh, move the release of the pr previously sailed executive session minutes as amended for February 4th, 2016, as well as the minutes of executive session. February 10th, 2016, by Mr. I actually, I'm Madam Chair, I'm you're just reporting that was the vote we just took in executive session, the release of the executive session minutes. We don't need to vote. We, we've just done that. Okay. We and you're just to. reporting what we did. Oh, I we thought did. we wanted to come back in public session to vote that again. I think you announcing it is sufficient. Okay. It has been done. It is public. Okay, it has been announced. So uh, the, the uh, amended minutes of February 4th, 2016, as well as the executive session minutes February 10th, 2016, have now been released. With that, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn by? So moved. Mr. Greerly, seconded by? Second. Mr. Byrne, any further discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Are those opposed? Unanimous vote.